OCI block volume storage now comes with consistent device path names and ordering. So this simplifies the management and ordering of block storage devices and improves the usability for many of the workloads on OCI. Now if we navigate to the block volume console, we can create a, a block volume here, assign it to an availability domain, select a backup policy, and we can now encrypt with a KMS key also. So under block volumes, we've created a simple block volume just as a, for testing purposes. And now if we navigate to our compute instances tab, we can click into an instance and under attached block, block volumes. So now if we select attached block volume, we've got an option for device path now available from the drop down where the device, the format is dev slash oracle oci slash oracle vd xx where xx can be ranges from A through to AF. We can scroll all the way down, corresponding up to 32 volume attachments per instance. So we can do all this from the console with a click. So we just select the block volume we just created, and then we'll select the first one, DVB or BDB, and just select attach. So we can confirm the device path in the console, and then we, need, we must run these iSCSI commands to attach the volume. So we can just copy them from the console and then SSH into the into the instance. And so we should see success in the output here. So to access the device on the instance and see the device path names, we can use the command lsscsi, so it's lsscsi. And there we can see it listed, sdb. And we can also do a long listing with the dev oracle oci, oracle vd. And so if we re reboot the instance in the console, give it a moment to reboot. If we SSH into the instance again, and if we run the same commands, so we can see the device path names and the hierarchies have stayed consistent across this reboot. So this is just one of a number of enhancements coming to OCI block volume storage and you can read more about it in the blog post linked in the description of this video.